it was an, an examination, so the, he called it an open book exam. Open book exam. Yes. Is there any open book? Is it like going to open a book or what? So what that means is he pointed us to a test book to read and then put some questions in the newspaper for you to answer. I mean, this is Jimmy Ibrahim of a guy. Jimmy Ibrahim, barrister Jimmy Ibrahim. So when I saw that concept, I was so happy. I, I, I loved him already. I fell in love immediately. I, immediately. How could you give young people an, a, 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 a vacancy advice? You give them a book to read, and then you, you give them questions, and you, have, you ask them to answer those questions based on these two books. And then, and that was it. I actually, surprised me was the father we were asked to pay a thousand naira for our id cards i can't believe it sir that, that cannot be true i'm telling i said with one thousand naira for, for an id card for the billionaire employing you yes billionaire businessman people were just paying and you know and i was shocked this is not right nobody is saying anything we're young people that just got but i paid grudgingly and so i started in my in my head i counted assuming we were 300 300 times a thousand naira is 300,000 there, right? Just like that, yes, sir. And then that was his hotel. What if he gave the money to the restaurant and asked them, use this to buy stock in stuff in Buck and then cook it for these people for the one week training we were supposed to be here? And then he, he was telling people, I fed them for one week. But that was not even a big deal anyway, but it was part of the, the, the big deals that happened later. In, we stayed in Abuja, we went back to Lagos on our own, no, no allowance. So later we were called back to training. I think we stayed about three months. Then the day came where we would be sent out for our assignment. After he made a speech, one of those annoying speeches of his, where he would be talking condescendingly, he were say, we were asked to meet our BDMs, you know, business development managers. We were BDOs, business development officers. So. And so I saw people holding hands and they were praying for Johnny Mercies and all of that. I thought, some, I said, but this is not the first thing to do. The first month came, end of that month. We were, I told you my salary was supposed to be about 125,000 naira. So the dots, VAT, and all of that, at least you should see going by 110 or 105. The first month salary came was 60 something thousand naira. Ah, uh -huh. I can't believe that. 60 I'm something. Yeah. I'm telling you. So those people that I had told, I have gotten a good job, and now I'll be any 110 or something. I was saying, you know, your lifestyle was supposed to jump up a bit immediately. But the first month, 60K or 60 something. The next month, well, 50 something and all of that. So we started asking, what's going on? He said um, that he was going to buy a car for us. So that is car loan. So they would collect offering the money, do praise and worship, do everything. That was a band there. Then this man would go to the UK anywhere in, in the world. He would buy books and then deduct the books from our salary and give us back the book. I still have management books at home that I never needed. He would deduct at source, no questions asked. If you talk, he's a man that can sack you in the elevator once you are in the lift and he, you are going upstairs and he asks you, have you read that book? What, was, what happened at page 15? And you, you told him, I don't, I don't know what happened. You can just be sacked by that. But one thing I know is that a, a laborer is entitled to his hire. According to the Bible. According to the Bible. Yes. By Shajimo Ibrahim, we pay that money one day. And I young people don't just run away when you have something like this go to court if it is your your right so that uh, he will not do that to others anymore when i wrote that story many people it went viral people were talking about it and all of that because it's the same thing that many people went through under him and other other bosses in nigeria mm. i other toxic bosses yes they came out that's why the story went viral because i spoke the minds of many people who couldn't come out mm. to say it um, and i'll keep saying it mm. If something is not right, challenge it. Don't just walk away. But if, because if you walk away, this person, the perpetrator, will continue to do it to young people. So at least, even if there is, he has not paid up to now, we got some money from him. Yes, he's still owing us in millions. He's still, he committed, a, 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 that company committed a crime by not paying pension contribution. I work for you, you pay me. That's the way it should be. If you don't like my services, that should be laid down principle as to how to disengage me from that job. You don't just wake, them, wake up one day because you are the employer. You see somebody inside the elevator and you're asking me about it. You don't even know the state of mind of that young person. Have you read this book? He will say, no, you're not serious. You are sacked. Just like that. Imagine. Imagine. People will call himself the octopus. People will go into depression, honestly. So it would have been better you didn't even employ them in the first place than making them go through that emotional torture. Sometimes you even feel as if, because as a way somebody will ask you a question, you'll be intimidated. This is a billionaire, the way he was mounting it. And so this is a young man from school. 
both of you are not on the same plane at all and then he's asking you a question you're already shaking In fact, one of the things that dragged me into the discussion with you was one article that went so viral. I think it started in November 2020 that you wrote, and uh, a whole of Nigerians started saying that we need to talk to you. Uh, it started with my spring with Jimo Ibrahim by Loki Hanza, you know, and uh, it's one article that really shocked a lot of people, and uh, it called to the uh, work ethics and work right of young people in this country, especially under the bossy atmosphere of toxic. Uh, managers and uh, uh, company owners. Can you recall what really happened? And, uh, what, what do you think this says about an average employer in Nigeria? And even an average employee too, especially young people. So it, it happened, um, I think it's around 2010, I was just green in Lagos. I, I left the shores of Wari, Delta State, to look for the greener pastors here. As I said, I, I took I was very interested in the media industry, so I was doing freelancing for Vanguard's newspaper and hoping to be employed fully. And so, you know, we got, we got used to, we were always having newspapers every day from, not, not just Vanguard, but other papers, I always so, so you know, exchange copies. So, one day we got an advert, vacancy advert from uh, Global Fleet Oil and Gas, as it was then called. It was, um, it was an an examination, so the, he called it an open book exam. Open book exam. Yes. Is there any open book? Is it like go to open a book or what? So what that means is he pointed us to a test book to read, and then put some questions in the newspaper for you to answer. I mean, this Jim Ibrahim, of a guy. Jim Ibrahim, barista Jim Ibrahim. So when I saw that concept, I was so happy. I I, I loved him already. Fell in love immediately. Immediately. How could you give young people and a a, a, a vacancy advice you give them a book to read and then you you give them questions and you, have, you ask them to answer those questions based on these two books and then and that was it so i looked out for the books i got them and then i i answered the questions that this man put there and they were very interesting so that was how one day we were called it was supposed to be the one-on-one -on -one interview we got to his big office on Broad Street in Lagos. One five one to one five six. One five six uh, in Lagos, and then we were told that for the fact that we were able to answer the questions correctly, we had been we were employed. It was direct employment, so we were happy. I went back home that day. Salary was supposed to be about one hundred and twenty something thousand. As of then, it was huge money, so I was already seeing myself as a big boy. So we went home, started preparing for the day we will be uh, deployed to our various uh, places of assignment. <laughs> So we were asked to come to uh, the offices for training. Later, we went to a filling station. I was sent to one place around the, one place in Lagos. I think it was around close to Oshodi. We were doing training, filling station training, and all of that. So it was uh, a wonderful experience. But 
you know, when you are given an um, employment, you are supposed to at least, you are doing training, so you were, expect, were expecting training allowance and all of that. So the next thing we had was we are going to be training in Abuja, Nikon Luxury Hotel. That's fantastic. You know, just the name alone. Yes, it makes it look too. So, I took a night bus, an, an, an evening to night bus that day, in preparation to the, the training in Abuja. There was no allowance for you to fly into Abuja or back to Lagos. But we just got a new job. We were ready to. Yes, yeah, so we're ready to bear everything. Uh, so we all got to Abuja and we're, first of all, placed two, two, two adults in a room. That is, Nikon luxury. That, 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 that is unfortunate. Two adults in a room. Yeah, so little by little, we, I started, it wasn't right to me. But I, I saw young people, I think we were about 300 then, first class graduates from Covenant University, all the two one graduates and all of that, were all gathered in Abuja. I started feeling on, uh, an unease inside of me. This is not right. So the next day, it was time for training. The first thing that actually surprised me was the fact that we were asked to pay a thousand naira for our ID cards. I can't believe it, sir. That, that cannot be true. I'm tell I said we thousand naira for, for an ID card. The billionaire employing you. Yes. The billionaire businessman. People were just paying. And you know, and I was shocked. This is not right. Nobody is saying anything. And we're young people that just got but I paid grudgingly. And so I started in my in my head I counted assuming we were three hundred. Three hundred times a thousand naira is three hundred thousand naira, right? Just like that. Yes, sir. And then that was his hotel. What if he gave the money to the restaurant and asked them use this to buy stock in stuff in bulk and then cook it for these people for the one week training we were supposed to be here and then he he was telling people I fed them for one week but that was not even a big deal anyway but it was part of the the, the big deals that happened later then we were the training or part of the training parts of the training were broadcast live on AIT. So they have money to advertise on AIT. Oh, so imagine your to collect one thousand for card ID card. That was another another red flag. So imagine your former colleagues or your schoolmates seeing you on AIT. I started getting calls, <laughs> bros. You have made it. You're now a big boy. So I it was another red flag, and then I don't want to mention names, but I know a very influential man of God also came that day to give us a 60-minute leadership training. So when you add one or two together, we're supposed to get three, right? So even though I wasn't happy, the red flags were there, but I was just hopeful. You know, that's the last thing you can take away from a young man in this country, hope. Mm -hmm. I was hopeful. Then after about a week, we asked to go back to Lagos. Don't just go, just go back to Lagos. The training has, has ended. You know the way Barisha Jim Ibrahim talks? Erratic. He's, uh, he doesn't care. He's a big man. He will come around, be rubbing his tummy, and then he's talking down on anybody. He just employed you. You are a young man. You're looking for opportunities. We would bear it, so we, we had to bear everything. We, That's why the there was no allowance for that. No allowance for transport, nothing, but we, ju we just got a job. So we would stay. In, we stayed in Abuja. We went back to Lagos on our own. No, no allowance. So later we were called back to training. I think we stayed about three months. Then the day came where we would be sent out for our assignment. After he made a speech, one of those annoying speeches of his, where he would be talking condescendingly, he were say, we were asked to meet our BDMs, you know, business development managers. We were BDOs, business development officers. So, and so I saw people holding hands and they were praying for Johnny Mercies and all of that. I thought, some, I said, but this is not the first thing to do. We have been sent, I was sent to a lorry, five of us. The next thing is for you to be given transportation and where you are going to stay when you get to a lorry. So I went to the admin. I said, Madam, if you are even sending a soldier to, to war, the war front. front, give him at least two bullets. One to fight off, like when he cannot fight anybody, at least another one to kill himself. So he's not taking, uh, that, was, that, was, that was exactly the way I said it. The woman laughed and she said, can you keep a secret? I said, why not? She asked for my account number and all of that. She gave me a check of 20,000 naira. By herself? Yes, for, it took her 20K. I went to- From Jimo. I don't even know where the money came from, but I asked, she saw that this, that was the right thing to do. She was the admin of that organization, but people were sent out, but because nobody asked any questions, and that was the way it happened. Ask and shall be given. Of course, so I kept the secret anyway until later when I started telling my colleagues, I withdrew that money that day. The next day, I said, hey, hey, this is the time to pray for Johnny Messi's because I now have my transport to Ilorin. When we got to Ilorin, we were lucky. Others were not that lucky. We got, a place was paid for already, a, a three-bedroom flat. 
apartment in, in Loring. I think it was nearing the uh, expiration. We, we stayed there and we were waiting for instructions from Lagos. We write a proposal. We are supposed to refurbish Moribond filling station that he bought out of, I, I don't know if it was what we call too much money in this country, about three filling stations will be bought uh, on the same route, the same side of the road. You call so, it say, turn around this part. Yeah, so we were asked to go and turn them around with no truth. So we stayed there. The first month came, end of that month. We were, I told you my salary was supposed to be by one real twenty five thousand naira. So the dots VAT and all of that. At least you should see go by one ten or one five. The first month salary came was sixty something thousand naira. Ah, uh -huh. I can't believe that. Sixty I'm something. Yeah. I'm telling you. So those people that I had told, I have gotten a good job and now I'll be any hundred and ten or something. I was now, you know, your lifestyle was supposed to jump up a bit immediately. But the first month. 60k or 60 something the next month was 50 something and all of that so we started asking what's going on he said um that he was going to buy a car for us so that is car loan the, even the names were he started from car loan then car whatever they called it that they would buy the car and give to me but i said it is not my money i should know what to do with my money but now in all of this we would be called to lagos we would do money devotion it, there will be time for offering. I'll be an offering casket. Come, you know, corporate uh, organization. He has not a church. He has a pastor. They call him Bishop. I don't know, whatever. He would come and preach in the morning, and he would be telling us, "Don't eat your tomorrow today. Don't eat your tomorrow." We would be me and my friend would be saying silently, "Let us eat our tomorrow by ourselves." Pay us our money. Okay, is that I think it's that tax is not like that. Yeah. So they would collect offering in the morning, do praise and worship, do everything. That was a band there. Then this man would go to the UK anywhere in, in the world. He would buy books and then deduct the books from our salary and give us back the books. I still have management books at home that I never needed. He would deduct at source, no questions asked. If you talk, he's a man that can sack you in the elevator. Once you are in the lift and he, you are going upstairs and he asks you, have you read that book? What, what, what happened at page 15? And you, you told him, I don't, I don't know what happened. You can just be sacked by that. Very erratic man. But we were still hoping. So you said we're going to give us a car. It was our first job as, as, as graduates. No problem. At the end of two years, so imagine half of 120 deducted for two years and then no car. The cash was not given to us. And then that was how we all left. Many people were sacked. We came to Lagos. We asked for our money. And then another story came that that was that they were using the money to ferry people from their offices to, to their various destinations. In Lagos, but we were not in Lagos. And in far away, I was in a lorry. So we all left. Just Nigeria young people. Some, some people didn't even survive for three months. They all left. And I give, I, give, I give kudos to those ones that didn't even stay for three months. They all left because it was a toxic environment. It wasn't a place to, to grow. There was nothing doing. We were just five people managing five filling stations. Two of them were working. We were trying to refurbish the third one. And that was it. No products would be sent from Lagos. We were just wasting away. And then this man would be giving speeches everywhere in the world. How he has taken 300 young people. How he is turning their lives around, how they are be doing turnaround maintenance for their organization, for his industries and all of his uh, companies and all of that. So when we left, and I told my colleagues, former colleagues now, mm. let's, let, this is not right. Let's go to court. Mm. Of course. So no, no, people said, so I, I, I called my, the person that we stayed in Lauren together. Mm. His name is Uche. So we went to a lawyer. I saw one in, Ke in Keja, I didn't, God bless that man, wherever Amen. he is. The man heard our story and he said, we know you don't have money. We were out of job where we didn't even have anything to do. We couldn't even hire any lawyer. Mm -hmm. But the man said, I'll take this case pro bono. Mm -hmm. That was how we started, National Industrial Court. For two, three years, we were on this case. This same barrister, Jimo Ibrahim, was hiring an SAN. Uh -uh. S A N K. I'm telling you, it's like uh, it's like honey dog to bite uh, cockroaches. Uh, cockroaches, you know, using a sledgehammer to kill an ant. I said, but this is the case is clear. Now another thing that happened, which is a crime, this country, God will help us one. Hey, Amen. You, the, you were supposed to um, be paying uh, employ, employees' contribution to pension and then employers' comp, comp, uh, contribution. Mm -hmm. This man's company and his accountants would collect the money from the employee, then divide it into two, 
call one part employee contribution and call the other part employers come and they were printing pay slip with this same information not knowing they were uh, incriminating the body no they can get away with it in that's the grand fraud fraud that's a crime but that's what we do we had all the pay slips i kept them those are the tape parts i gave to the employment letter the pay slips that we gave to the lawyer and he went to court pro bono then SAM was coming to court to defend the same case. The, the, the governor has said, I want to rule on almost three times. The, the car that he bought with the money, he said he bought with the money, we didn't see the car. The money he said for us, without our consent, he never gave to us. And then we went to court, first year, second year. One day, the, the SAN and his lawyers were wasting time. The judge awarded us a, a cost of 30000 naira. They paid immediately. Then we started removing it. Imagine if we paid for that cost of, uh, for, for that lawyer, we would have been able to, we would have given up. That's why people give up in this country. But that man, he, he, he took up that case, and then he got a case that we won. We won this case, even though the judge then did not award um, interest on the money. By now, it would have been, uh, yeah. yes, but have yeah. accumulated. Yeah. But we won. But you know what? Jim was appealed. Appeal again. I said we went to appeal court again. again, and then we won again. And the appeal court. And the appeal court. Then, do you know what he did? He cleverly re removed because other people were not going. When they saw us, they were not going to court too. He now cleverly removed money from every uh, account that belonged to that company. So that's what they call Ganesh order. That was the first time I heard what that means. Ganesh order is when you have the right to go. Any money that drops in that account, that is in layman term, you are you have the right to go and collect it since you have you now have the court judgment. So that was what the lawyer was now using, checking all the accounts. One day we saw the man called that they saw about I think nine hundred thousand in one of the accounts. I don't know. God just blessed us with that that day. Mm -hmm. the, because if you have a guarantee or any amount that drops in that account, you can't touch it anymore. Mm -hmm. The bank cannot even give it to you. Mm -hmm. So they called the, my lawyer, and that was why we got part of it. Mm -hmm. Quickly, just, at least we got something. Mm -hmm. And then the matter is still there. The guarantee order is, order is still there. The money is still not paid. But Mr. Jimon is still out there. He is still a businessman. And um, people are still working for him. And um, the lawyer is trying to see if he can now do, I don't know what they call that, where he can now um, maybe use one of the, his properties in Lagos or yes. anywhere as part of what he will use to pay for that money. But one thing I know is that a, a laborer is entitled to his hire. According to the Bible. According to the Bible. Yes. But Mr. Jimon Ibrahim will pay that money one day. And I young people don't just run away when you have something like this go to court if it is your your right so that uh, he will not do that to others anymore when i wrote that story many people it went viral people were talking about it and all of that because it's the same thing that many people went through under him and other uh, other bosses in nigeria i other toxic bosses yes they came out that's why the story went viral because i spoke the minds of many people who couldn't come out to say it um, and i'll keep saying it if something is not right, challenge it. Don't just walk away. But if, because if you walk away, this person, the perpetrator, will continue to do it to young people. So at least, even if there is, he has not paid up to now, we got some money from him. Yes, he's still owing us in millions. He's still, he committed, a, a, that company committed a crime by not paying pension contribution. Mm -hmm. And so, and the judge who gave us judgment, he didn't award, um, uh, what interest but it is fine at least we made a statement tomorrow he won't do it to other people again and if you go to court again and win before you before you one day something will be done and he will have to pay all he owed and so i'm talking i'm talking about uh not just walking away i've said it because yes, so whatever is wrong and you know it's wrong I'm like please challenge it that was what we did and we were happy that we did hmm. Hmm. let me ask you this uh you see the gym Ryan just mentioned now as at that time, he said he was a billionaire. And I remembered he came to buy a newspaper I was working. That is a National Mirror. Mirror. Yes, and when he bought the paper in 2008, I resigned immediately because my mind told me that a man that is so garrulous definitely will not be able to be humane because he talks to people anyhow. Anybody that talks to people condescendingly, definitely by my psychological measures, cannot be... He cannot have human interest in his heart and it can't be human. So the first red flag for me was that some editors went to Wena Hotel, he took them for a turnaround seminar, and they said uh, he put them two to two in a room. And my editor called me, Mr. Folabi, 
God bless him wherever he is. And he told me, I said, no, this is not good. You people are adults. Why should you put you two to two in a room? He's the owner of the Wayner Hotel. Before Gonomi Miko came to take the hotel from him because of his uh, uh, jam, jam talking attitude and all that, his garrulous uh, tongue and all that. Uh, and this is without prejudice. Now, I told my editor, then the worst of it was that he said he should give them two, two pieces of yam that they should not eat too much. That the two pieces and one egg. And I told my editor, are you going to be doing this? He said, ah. He said no, that he's always going to eat outside and he will come back. Then they said when he's doing the seminar, he will be touching his stomach that there was a professor he brought around, the professor was talking, and the next thing he did was that he said, Prof, 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 go and sit down, go and sit down. Go and sit down. He said, You don't know anything, but you are prof. You don't know anything. You can see the way your, your shoe is, you can see your clothes, you can see everything. Then he was now touching his stomach and he he said somebody, Are you looking at my stomach? He said, Ah, he says, This stomach, investment, investment. And I started, I, I said, I told them, I said, before you come, I would have left, you know, because I knew something was wrong. And when he came in, he said he's not going to pay BTA again, that people should be coming to come and have uh, whatever in, uh, uh, what do you call it? That some people are going to take, you know, all those things from him and all that. And I wonder, I said, why will he behave this way? And that was why I left. But you working closely with him, because I didn't give the opportunity for him to... To, to malign my emotions uh, because he, he said he's taking BTA from them. He took them. They will be going to meetings at, uh, his, uh, uh, what they call it, VGC from Ikeja. And he put them in the bus that before most of them come down, their leg will have been paining them, paja paja and all that. Then if a journalist doesn't have BTA weekly, how does he survive? He's going to put it with salary. Then later I close down the paper. I said he's going to read one book on 15, Law of Reality. Yeah. There's some people died along the run line. He said he's po poaching for two years. A lot of people died, including God, they away, who crossed over from ovation to that place. And by the time I opened the place, there were a lot of morals down. And he sacked some people over on the spot. Some were molested. Someone like one Harry Abirari was molested, just sacked on the spot some during the meeting. So, but what does it tells you about him and about the justice system of this country. If I worked with him in, in the Lagos office, mm. I'm sure I would have left before that time. I would have stayed up to six months, honestly. I can't survive in such an environment. I, I, I was far away from him, so I wasn't, I was hearing the stories of the high handedness and, and all of that. So mm. if I stayed with him, same place, and he was meting out those things to us, I would have stayed to that time I would have left. And that is a very the, the best thing you could have done. Instead of allowing yourself to be under that torture, it is better because you cannot progress, you can't you can't grow under such environment. So talking about the justice system, yes, uh, yeah. It, for, so imagine you know billionaires in this country, they 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 travel abroad and they see what works, how the society works yeah. and all of that. Yes. What they cannot do there, they come back to this country and do it and then they go scot free. And what is annoys me is that they make it feel as if some people don't have jobs. So you are even lucky to have. Yes, that is what that is one thing. So if you know we're just green, we just left school as uh, NYC and we just got a job and we're all happy and all of that. So imagine doing that. I don't know about it was in National Industrial Court that we went to. So I don't know about deep about labor laws in this country. Mm -hmm. So imagine if this happened in a country like the UK. Imagine if it happened in the US where they run to these billionaires and then they, they are happy with the society. Mm -hmm. So imagine yeah, yeah. if it's in a country like UK. Yes, yeah, so imagine not, US. imagine not paying your employee contrib mm -hmm. employer contribution to an employee. That, that, that is satanist. So imagine that crazy. that and you see you were able to to maintain that organize that company for many years and nothing was done. Then you went to court and then you the first from the National Industrial Court, then we went to a P court and we won up to now. The man has still not been uh, he has not obeyed the, the that judgment. judgment. And he is still traveling up and down. He even wanted to rule a state in this country. On those states. Yes. On those states. He wanted to be a governor of a state, that same person. So we, we were happy, we congratulated him. We were happy when he he was creating, giving jobs to young people. But if you 
we do that, do it the right way, do it according to the law. Let the people pray for you and bless your business. Not bringing them, uh, because he's a very smart man. See, he, he was telling us that you, if you want to make it, you read books. You, we thought that reading books would just make you a billionaire. Mm. It doesn't happen that way. Mm. We were reading books. If I didn't read the books he say, he, where he said those questions, I would have been able to pass that exam. Mm. We, all read, we are still reading books. You will not just read books and translate those books into, into uh, being billionaire. We don't know how he, he was making billions, but we saw the business that he handled. Did they work? Uh, what's it called? Air Nigeria, where is it today? He cap he cap he it in his hands. Uh, no, 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 it was the first was uh, Nikon, uh, was it e no, ES, no. ES, yes, airline that cap cap capitulated. Then when he bought Virgin that was commanded to Air Nigeria, I told everybody that he's not going to succeed. And they asked me why. I said, "This man, we want to see everything in total. You want to?" And when when Captain Dakulumi they left, I said, "I've been justified. I knew he couldn't run an airline, especially someone that could not run a newspaper." Yes. So you don't just read a book and become a newspaper publisher. That's 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 what he wanted to. You will read the uh, uh, Frederick Richard and uh, Good to Great and all of that, and you want to become allow the people to run this thing and give your support where you should. No, that was, that was what he was doing. So you don't just read one book today, you want to become uh, the owner of or the, the, the a businessman that will run all these businesses with by directly. That was what happened. So if reading a book will make you a very good, successful businessman, this is, do look at where it, it, it got him. Mm. How would we look up to such a person and be reading books and be um, uh, managing companies and then they are folding up? Mm. So we, I think, He's very smart. He would bring a lot of people. You know, if you if you develop your communication skills, many doors will open to you in this country. Yeah. Especially when people are looking for a job and they're looking for something to eat, and you so you begin to use that to to tell them you even have one. So you should be happy that I gave you a job in the first place. Mm -hmm. I think em employees in this country should also be respected. Mm -hmm. This is I I wasn't taken from the streets because I was I was hungry looking for. It was because he saw a ski too. Oh, he saw a potential. He saw a potential. Yeah. So he's supposed to be a, 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 a balance. A, yes, a win-win situation. You employed me to do something. When I do it, then you pay me. That's what he was supposed to be. But he but saw even the pain. He started cheating you directly. Yeah, imagine directly from source. He saw it as a way that if you that I gave a job, who were, who were you when with, with, with without this job? So that's not the way to treat employers in this country. So that's why I'm I'm, I'm not very sure uh, about labor laws in this country. But I think something should be done in that direction. He, an employer and an employee is a win-win situation. I'm coming here with my skills. You are bringing your expertise. You are the owner. And then you are paying me a salary. I work for you. You pay me. That's the way it should be. If you don't like my services, that should be laid down principle as to how to disengage me from that job. You don't just wake, wake up one day because you are the employer. You see somebody inside the elevator and you ask him about it. You don't even know the state of mind of that young person. Have you read this book? He will say, no, you are not serious. You are sacked. Just like that. Imagine. Imagine people will call inside the octopus. People will go into depression, honestly. So it could have been better you didn't even employ them in the first place than making them go through that emotional torture. Sometimes you even feel as if, because as a way somebody will ask you a question, you'll be intimidated. This is a billionaire, the way he was mounting it. And so this is a young man from school. Both of you are not on the same plane at all. And then he's asking you a question. You're already shaking. One day I was in the elevator in Abuja in the, uh, the Nikon Luxury Hotel. Immediately the, thing, the, elevator, the door opened and I saw him inside. I, did, I, I told him I was not going up anymore. But I didn't want to stay in the same elevator with that man. He was, he was asking me questions. Because me, I won't take it. I'll tell you, I'll, sir, I came here for, an, for a training. I'm, I didn't come here for another interview. So, but I just did. I just avoided it. And, yeah, and he laughed. Like the plan. Yes, he laughed no. because he knew what why I said I wasn't going anymore. The door opened and I saw him inside and some other people. You enter, I said, I'm not, I've changed my mind. He laughed. But I didn't want to be in that. It's, imagine, is that the relationship an employee should have with his employer? No, sir. That's not it. So an employer, employee should walk into the, it should be like a, a a lead, a follower who is following a leader. The employees are supposed, the employees are supposed to be the leader who is leading these people. By the time you get to a, a, another level, you're able to look back and say, "I was here. This man picked me from here, and he brought me here." But I don't think there are many people that can say that no. about uh, Barrister Jimmy Ibrahim. I'll keep saying this. I, I know when he read that story, I, somebody copied the story again and pasted it inside a WhatsApp group that he belonged to. And the person now copied again his response back to Facebook. I still saved it, but I sent it to the lawyer.
he said instead of him to uh, to address the situation, he was talking about the, the young man is a lazy is a lazy man. <laughs> The people that work with me, they are all big people tomorrow. That was what he was talking about. When some people were dead. He spoke, he didn't speak to the issues I raised. He was talking about the, you see, the, the, the governor of Kogi State, he was once, whatever, the man here was once my, my employee. They are all doing well. If that man is not, if that young man is not doing well, he's a lazy man. That's what he's, that was the only thing he replied. That, that same braggadocio, that same talkativeness, that is the, the same way he's. But you know why? He can get away with it. That's, that is why many people will still do it tomorrow. They can get away with it. You can't do this in the societies that they run to and get away with it. By now, hairs would have rolled. But here in this country, but I know we will get there one day. It started with um, that kind of a lawyer that took this case. This what, what was the name of that lawyer? Really? I think that lawyer should be a very good man because there are only few of them, even those that portray themselves as human rights lawyers. Yeah. They are failures. You go to their office and they tell you they are human rights lawyers and they are calling 10 million, they are calling millions of naira for you to go and pay. This man was taken out in his car to the court, Barista Michael Monam. Barista Michael Monam, may God bless him wherever he is. But you know what, the, the man, he, he never knew where I came from and all of that, but you know something happened. Interestingly, I went to church one day and I saw that the man is, a, I think he's a deacon in my own church, I met him, but he didn't know where I was. He just saw me and said, this case, don't worry, I will take it pro bono, we'll follow you to the end. This man will spend his money to do photocopies and all of that. For years, he was doing it. Any Anytime I get to Lagos, I will go and look for that man again and just say thank you, because if we have many of them like that in this country, I think we'll be able to to stand uh, 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 against this um, injustice. injustice that we have in the that system. Is, that, that is ethical, uh, emotionally. Yes, the, the the ease of the workplace that young people are passing through today, and if they know that such people are available, I think even the employ employers also will also know how not to step out of their bounds. Mm. Yes, because. There is a place where you can go to and a lawyer is ready. There are many of them anyway. That was the man I met that time. And there are many of them out there in this country who are, who are um, helping young people um, fight their case with employ employers who are not helping young people in this country. But Mr. Mike Umona, I will always respect him. He fought that case to the, uh, to the, to, to, to the letter and he won. Even though we have not gotten the, the money, the complete money, in my mind, we won. In my head, we won against by, by Sajimo and against a system that is uh, not fair to young people in this country. I want to ask you this question. A newspaper, as it was the news, did a story and they said Jim Ibrahim, the copied virus. It was a big story then. I have a copy in my library as I'm talking to you now. Jim Ibrahim, the copied virus. And they analyze all the company he has bought from robots to low cost. I mean, he buys companies from people and the next thing he run it, run it and run it aground and people get sacked, get scattered. And some some of the filling station is even talking about most of these filling station, I have traveled from here to Undo and I was able to travel down to Kitivupa and there is the same state of stupor. Only lizards and uh, cockroaches and spiders are engaging this feeling station. Even the one that is somewhere in Ijaye, Ujokure area, the place I lived before, yeah. it's like this is that are living there now. Yeah. So are you going to agree with the news that Jim Ibrahim is a corporate virus? So they say if they are looking for some, some something got missing in this particular community. He called himself an octopus, but the paper said it's a corporate virus. So something got missing in, his, in a community. And the, many people, all the occupants of that community were not around. The only person that was around was a certain man. Will it be now wrong to say that that man was the culprit? It wouldn't be wrong. Yes, sir. People, something got missing in the community. The only person that was around within that community was a certain man. That certain man is will be held responsible for what is missing in that community. We automatically the culprit. So that's the same thing. You will have we have we have seen the examples. You know Nikon Lusry, you know uh, is it Nigeria Re, yeah, you, you know insurance, insurance your insurance, you know Air Nigeria. Air Nigeria, Global Fleet Oil and Gas, then the energy groups, all the oh, mirror newspaper, mirror newspaper and uh, all of that. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, news watch news watch and all of that. Where are they? This is the same person who came to we all had hopes, high hopes, honestly. He said, we're going to do a corporate turnaround, then we will turn all this around, and then we will have a very vibrant organization. After reading books, fine. 
we followed him to that stage where they all went down. What would you call such a person? I think they were right, really, because if there's a virus in the system, it will not grow. It will keep eating the roots. Before you know it, it will crumble. And that's the way so many of them crumbled. I wish they all survived. I wish the young people that he employed, they all had something uh, to take away from this organization, these companies. I wish they were still vibrant and running. Many people would have been employed today. Many people would have been earning a living today and giving glory to God while thanking the man who is the the corporate uh, octopus. But look at where we are today. He called himself corporate octopus, but yeah. the newspaper said it's a corporate virus. We would have been better off if they were all well managed and run by the way he said it. But look at where we are today. We are fighting uh, youth unemployment, yet there are companies that have been run aground. Imagine the filling stations. Five were in, in, in that part of Illorin that we were managing. None of them. That was the time I was coming to Abuja by road and we saw some of them. In Comatos. Uh, oh, we were talking about the lizard. This one, when you have a, a big bush, it's no more, when you have uh, a filiation taken over by uh, a forest, it's, it's no more lizards anymore. Mm -hmm. And they are still there. The reptiles. Now. These were bought and paid for. These were bought and paid for. It wasn't going to, to, to work, but they just put some money there and they asked us to come and manage. But we were there. He will, that was one of the things he was talking about was that why you guys were there. That was nothing you were doing. Really, they would send one truck from Lagos and we would sell one truck and wait for another truck to come again. We, I learned how to, how to even dispense fear from filling station. It was good. I was taking round that. I thought I was going to have a career in the oil and gas industry. But like I said in that article, I, we saw the gas even without the oil. <laughs> That's why we, we were happy that we had gotten a job in the oil and gas. But it was just a little gas that came into our nose. We never saw the oil. And we all went back. This is where we are. In fact, I want to ask you a question because you see, most of these buses now, I mean, I've worked with someone that every Monday morning, it will tell us that if you don't meet up the prayer meeting, they're going to surcharge you. And you live in a very far place. And every morning, every morning you are running like a madman. And then you get to the gate by... Maybe 8 a.m. they've locked the door against you and they're clapping and praising God. And by the time they finish the prayer, when you enter, they'll be looking at you like somebody that just pushed it, like an outcast. And the next thing you get a letter, they surcharge you four days, five days, three days. And I read this somewhere. I said, and I looted the Monday morning praise and worship at their quarters, hypocritical. Thank God I was working in Ilorin and I had to endure that each time we had a meeting in Lagos. He had one Bishop Ugidingbe as company pastor. There was a band and a sermon on Monday morning and even offering. Yes, offering. I never paid any offering, God forbid. Then the bishop would preach on how we should not eat our tomorrow today. Yet Jima was owing us our tomorrow. My friend, Yinka and I will, my friend Yinka and I will immediately, but whispering retort, allow us to eat our tomorrow by ourselves. It's better than you eating it by not paying us our complete salary. Looking at this, uh, those morning prayers in a system whereby underneath there's garrulous corruption, there's a lot of horrible Mr. Manio going on, you know, uh, maligning people's destiny as it appears, as it were. How will you relate it with religion in this instance? I think, like I said, I think it's hypocritical. You, you, you see, uh, people make organizations, people make companies, not just the name, not the buildings, the people. If you don't build those people and their morale, the company will crash. That's just it. You can't be doing praise and worship and somebody who is coming to uh, Broad Street, Lagos Highland, all the way from Bega. Or from Alakuko. From Alakuko. From Songwater. Or from Songwater, who is in a hurry to get to the office is locked out and you are praising God. The, like, you know, the, these are the people that are going to build that company that you are creating. How will you expect it to? In fact, in my own case, there was a Jehovah witness, Mr. Sari Obaze, who said, look, my faith does not allow us to be clapping hand here. He said he must clap hand. That if you don't clap hand, they will surcharge you from your salary and they won't give you BTA. This man is still alive now. But that is the thing we, about us in this country. We are too religious. We are too religious. See, what does it take a, an organization, a company, to tell you this is the rules, this is what we do here. Instead of doing praise and worship in the morning, you can raise an altar in the, the that's what they call raising an altar in the marketplace. You can raise an altar, employ pastors, and put them on payroll. They will be praying money afternoon and evening if that's what you want. You open an office for them. Is that not what they do? Some people do it, they create an office, 
employ pastors and they are praying day and night for you that is what you want they allow those who are working to work you employ people from diverse faiths yes. and then you are bringing them together there are there are there were muslims there you mentioned Jehovah's witnesses yes sir and all of that then you are bringing them together to do praise and worship Forcing them. yeah but before you leave you see that's why we pray too much in this country we have been praying that man prayed every monday morning and look at what happened some people never prayed i don't know if you hear if or, the people never pray i'm not saying prayer is not good but the thing is it first things first do the right thing do the right thing these yeah. prayers were aligned you can't even be if our people were forced to pray and i'm not sure god would even answer such a prayer yes sir we were forced to to gather there and to worship god i wasn't even uh, praying uh, i was of your conscious yes and then we will not take offering in and off in uh, uh, i wish we were doing that in 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 a, in a utopian environment it would have been people would have forgiven him for would have forgiven him sorry for for doing that but you are doing that you are owing them salaries you are speaking down or talking down on them and then we are praying monday morning then when you are done with the prayers offerings and all of that he will now mount the pulpit he is now the i, I will call him the archbishop now he will now come and start jimmy Ibrahim. Is yes he will archbishop jimmy Ibrahim. yes he will now start preaching talking from 19 to the dozens about how he is a billionaire how he has sent money to one with this and all of that you just be it doesn't add up that is time you would have used for to set your to-do list for that day or at least for that week that's where people we we other companies were making it you are you are there doing praise and worship in the morning where you're supposed to be doing what you should be doing you see we are too religious that's what happens and see it's the same society that we have today you look at somebody, something is wrong, prayer is good, yes, but you, instead of you to, you, you want to cross the road, you won't look left and right, but you are running into the road and you are saying, God, please help me. Why not just stay and allow the vehicle to pass? God gave us a brain, so we should leave him alone. That's the problem we have. We are too religious in this country. How can a man be doing prayer and praise and worship? In it? Do it. Pay people to do it for you, and that will be fine. Allow your workers to work. That was why you employ them. And thank, and thank God it's not all gloom and dark. There are other, uh, after working with him, I've worked with other people, and they are never the same. They are mm. world apart. Mm. World apart. You are employed to do a job, you do it. And if you fail, you are corrected, you are helped. Then you grow again, and then you are happy. You wake up in the next morning, you are happy to go to work. You are motivated. You are motivated. You, when you see your executive director or your MD, you are happy. If I, you want to work close to him, not that you see your ED because he has read uh, 50 books, you can't stay in the same elevator with him because he's going to talk down on you. He's going to ask you a question that will unsettle you for a whole week. No. Or a question that will send you out of the system. A question that will send you out of the system because if you don't know it, you are in trouble. If you know it, we will ask you another one. So that is not the way it is. Thank God I have experienced both worlds. Now I know which is better. Mm -hmm. I would prefer to stay in a place where I know we don't have praise and worship, but the environment is congenial, it's conducive to growth and and uh, and and to growth and and what whatever is good in a, in a working environment then be doing praise and worship in the morning paying offering and listening to a pastor where you are not free where you cannot grow where you will be old salaries and all of that and that emotional, emotional arrest culture, you will be down you are coming to work the next day you are scared I, I I really do not know how people were able to survive that man for two years at the head office. I wouldn't have been able to survive. But there was a, there was, a, there was a, an editor that was going home one night and he was shot by arm robber. He closed around one a.m. and I think he wanted to take uh, somewhere around the Kurudu. He wanted to take money from the ATM and he got in his car. They pursued him. They killed him. And Jimmy promised going to take care of the wife and the children and everything. But today they are still languishing in poverty. He gave a public news everywhere. The press was released into the newspaper that is going to take care of the remaining, the family, the wife. And the wife started parroting, according to information, started coming to the office, coming to the office. Even one of our friends, Maxwell, God f forgive his, his soul now, Maxwell Odita, he was sacked. I saw his letter. They were owing him 12 months. They only pay him two. And it was remaining 10 months. And I told him when he was coming to my house, they said, Take this man, quickly take this case to court. Be clear. I mean, these people will not pay you. They will, you are going to, if you are going to die. And eventually he died. He died in July, I think July 2nd, year 2016. They were owing him 10 months. And a lot of that. So, how will you describe that kind of a character? I mean, when you promise that you're going to help the children of a man who worked with you who was killed on on duty who was a victim of your own job that you gave to him he died while on duty 
you know i think in france there was a judgment that day in france yeah. somebody that slept with a woman and died yeah. yes. and they said the company should pay that because yes. it was working when it's he working. slept with the woman yes so it's a very sad thing honestly it's a very sad situation honestly I imagine First of all, I want to speak to those who, who, who work on that environment. See, if it happens, they said if the, the frog in front falls into a ditch, the ones behind, they will take caution. If it has happened to one, two, three, four, five, I don't, I don't see a reason why you should sit down and hope and think it will not happen to you. You understand? So people will, will see this. The next day he comes around and he tells you another story, turn around all of that. You will still believe him and then stay there and be hoping. You know, it's, I know it's difficult really, but I think people should learn to, to just see the red flags and, and your sanity matters, your health matters. Imagine, I don't blame them for believing that a billionaire saying, a so-called billionaire is saying that I'm going to give you money, I'm going to take care of the family. I don't blame them. But the thing is that he said it before, he didn't do it, he failed. He said he was going to pay your salary. If he had told me that, I would have believed him. I remember one now, even my brother, Chris Ken, the one do, he said Jim O'Brien was the one that ruined his life when it comes to seminar. The first seminar he organized, he took invitation to him, according to him, and Jim said, don't, don't, don't employ, don't bring this one, let me come. He was the father of the day at Sheraton Hotel, and he promised to donate five million. Till today, except Chris, they want to get five million tomorrow. <laughs> There's another which a Chris that worked with my former boss before. He went and did a book on Nigeria Stock Exchange. He came there, he promised five million. Which a Chris is still running around now, working with the same man, no car, nothing, still suffering. You know. So, what kind of a character? Is you see, I. It's a pity, really. The thing is that the same person. It's possible. It's because of his style, he, the way he was doing it. He was so smart about it. He could go to a church and donate three million euro. Or he could go to somewhere and say, if you have a business and you need like 300,000 to whatever, just come out. And by the time you come out, he will say, I'm going to answer your prayers today, give you 300,000 euro, for instance. So by the time he lives there, those people that had what happened and saw it, they'll begin to, ah, this man. So imagine, let's even go back to the beginning when he, he took us to Abuja. Imagine without giving you transport and uh, any allowance he was your your training was being broadcast live on ait you know how much that would cost right just like when he was fighting you paying millions for sun imagine let's start from the beginning yes you are you are, you are sent from lagos to abuja mm -hmm. and then your training is broadcast live on ait but Can you imagine? ait of all places yes but and you could advertise you could pay for that huge amount of money yes it's taking one thousand from those people that don't have anything yes, to give them an id card for id card so imagine so we i think we should be able to just see those red flags and tell ourselves the truth and just move on there will be people like Barrister Jim Ibrahim tomorrow, they are still there in the society, but there are, thank God, there are much more people who, who know the value of the employee, who know the place of the employee in organization, who know how to treat them right. So, uh, you see, he, he was very smart about, you're asking about why do you speak to such a character? He was yes. very smart about it. So imagine, Doing a, doing a seminar or coming out in, pub, out in public and first of all, the first thing he will tell you is about the three books or four books that he just read. By the time you, he says that, you pay attention to him. Whatever he says, you believe him. So it will be difficult for you to reconcile where somebody is telling you tomorrow that this same man that is talking <laughs> is owing me my salary. You understand? So he was very good. So he, we had a, 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 a double kind of lifestyle, or a dual lifestyle, sorry. He will do, say one thing, and then he does another thing, and then it will be difficult to reconcile. I think he was very smart about it, and he knew what he was doing, I'm very sure. I, I still keep saying it. I wish what we hoped for, what he presented to us, was what actually happened at the end of the day. But we have learned our lessons too. We never judge a book by its cover. Life is not just about reading books and then turning around organizations and all of that. We should be able to discern when when you see the first second red flag. If you are patient enough, wait for the red flag. But the first let second. Let me tell you my own red flag. When I was in that mirror, my red flag was that those people, he called them interventionist manager. They would just come to the newspaper. You are buying the newspaper from us. Then we greet you, you will us house. You will just treat us as if I'm Willie Lee. And I was asking myself, I said, I am going to be the one to work. The newspaper is not going to get the story. Yes. I am the reporter that I'm going to go out to search for the story that will sell the newspaper. So I'm greeting you and you are treating me. So I resigned 
my publisher was shocked then i was the only guy that resigned and i and i granted an interview then i remember to news of the people i said jimmy Ibrahim can buy the paper but he can't buy my destiny yes. and when i resigned that was it and i told one of my editors to also resign but he allowed himself to be dragged to uh aja and the uh, uh, broad street and by the time he learned it he has bo almost burnt four of his fingers and he, he, he escaped too and a lot of people escaped i told them i said this is the red flag that a man that talks people down and i can sack people on the spot i mean and when i also heard that captain that the fine guy who was running um uh, what do you call it air nigeria when it was still um virgin virgin, virgin nigeria when he walked away without even giving jimo his, a, a resignation letter i knew that was a guy with my kind of pedigree so these red flags how do you think people should notice in these toxic people and how do you think they should take a dive for safety yeah I, first of all i think young people any employee first of all you should know your worth know who you are recognize any red flag no matter how small it is oh. and then learn know where to, where to draw the line and then walk away he who fights and runs away leaves to fight another day you, it's better you are alive to take up another job than to kill yourself in one job where so let us not have this mindset of man I know, you know, people, morality, uh, the elders of the society will tell you, ah, hold this one that you have, or you don't know where the next one is coming. We know that is fine. But it's also good for you to, to be alive first, to be able to get another job too. Mm -hmm. So if you know your worth really, and you know that this is not what I am supposed to be getting at this time, and you are ready to be humble, but the, the situation is not helping you, please move on. There are other people too out there who have the same opportunities or even more that we where your services will be respected and then you will earn a living you will also be respected while doing so so we should know our worth that was why let's go back where we started from read two if you know you have the skills yeah. and you know your worth somebody will not be pushing you around really and apart from knowing your worth if you are really really ready to work and some there's an environment where a friendly, environment. a friendly environment and you have an environment where no matter what you do you're, the hostile you're environment. always under tension mm. please respect your sanity take care of your mental health and walk away it is always better to know when to draw the line know when to walk away and and, and then know what to walk away from honestly life is not just about you know i now have a job i'm going to an office and all of that if you can if you can if it's not working anymore right? yeah you know when to fold them and you know when to hold them mm. yeah and then you know when to walk away yeah, that's the gambler. Yeah. So you know when to fold them, yeah. you know when to hold them, you know when to walk away. That's just what I'm telling people. Yeah. Know when to walk away. Know your what. Retool yourself. Know when to draw the line and know when to walk away. There are other opportunities out there. I want to ask, before I ask the last question, that if you see a thousands of victims of the Jimonized situation, I call it the Jimonized working environment. People who Jimon Ibrahim has... This is without Avarice, who has deceived, either promising them a turn around and eventually they turn aside or turn a fall. What's going to be your advice to them? If you have the microphone and you find a thousands of them or let's say even 200 of them in a hall. I, I don't, those who, I, I, are you talking about those who are still working under him or those who left? The victims. The victims, first of all, I would say, no matter what, go to court. Seek justice. If you want to walk away, it's fine. But I think you should do it for posterity's sake. You should do it for those who are looking up to you. You should just do it. If it is not right, let's do it so that those who are coming up will know that if something is not right, that is, some, that is a place where you go to, where you get justice. Even if it takes long, the, the mills of justice grind slowly, but it grinds. So even if it is, even if it grinds slowly, it's grinding little by little. We went to court and we got at least about 800 to 900,000 naira. Yeah, that was the first time we were able to say our lawyer, take something, you, you have worked and fought for this. So when you, when I see them, that's the first I'm going to tell them, if you are going to walk away, at least tell your story so that others will learn from it. As I said earlier, you are the frog that was in front of other people. If you fell into a ditch, not knowingly, Tell others where there is a dish so they don't go there. So that's what I would tell them. Don't hide it. Tell others. If it's good to look for a job, it's possible Jim is now a changed man. I don't know. But if, if that same thing happens, tell other people. Let them not come here. You know, this life should be like a beggar telling other beggars where to get bread. 
So you get bread somewhere, you say, please come, but there is bread here. And if there is no bread here, please tell others too, so they don't waste their time coming over here where there is no bread. That's where I would tell them. Please, if you have been a victim, tell your story. Let others learn from it. And if you want to take it further, which I always encourage, go to court and let this court system, even if it is slow, but at least it is grinding little by little. One day we will get just the full measure of our justice and then of our, uh, the court judgment, and then we will sing a song of victory. But when you are under such a situation, you are a victim, please tell your story, let others know, and then so that they learn from it and don't fall into the same They take precautions so they don't fall into the same ditch that you fell into. So imagine staying in such an environment for, say, for two years. So imagine what I would have done if I started out my life somewhere else. Mm. So imagine taking two years back, mm. working just in hope. Aimlessly. Aimlessly. So if you are told that you have another 60K somewhere that someone is keeping for you, you are happy that you already have savings, you will think that you have pension somewhere, and then you can even squander your first 60. You're already saving half of your salary. That's good. And that's good enough now. Mm. But at the end of the time, you don't have it. It's a deceit. It's a, it's a, it's a deceit. Imagine. So imagine spend, technical deceit. Imagine two, operate this. It's like taking two years of my life. Imagine, imagine if I started where well with another uh, uh, employer. Maybe life would have been a lot better than it is right now. But we thank God where we are anyway. But those two years, we 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 just lived on that hope, and I don't want any other young person to experience such a thing. I want, I want to ask this question because it's very potent too. Uh, there was a time you you are doing consultancy job for another media house, whereby the publisher was always glamorizing Jimmy Ibrahim because several would tell me, "Oh, he's having a seminar, and all the staff should go there." And I would tell them, "I am not going to the seminar. I used to stay because I was contributing there, and I see you are doing some." Um, consultancy job for them there, and I always see your continents then. So, how did you handle that same publisher? Because the role of the media too is very potent, potent in this, because you have to hold people to accountability. And if your friend is someone that is owing staff and is telling you about how to owe staff, and it's appearing that most of your editors have run away now, you are the only one that your magazine is not up to 1,000 copies or 1,005, because everybody can see that you are not even humane again. So what does it tell you about that, media? That's the, the role of the media. Really, you, someone is running his companies at ground. He's still holding terminals and people are attending. And then we are writing glamorous, um, uh, flowery statements about that same Let me cut you. Let me cut you short here. Do, do you know Tony Subar, the MD of High TV in those days? Said Jim O'Brien was his role model, yeah. but he asked to say, "Why is High TV now? High TV was supposed to compete with, uh, with, uh, with uh, GSTV. GSTV. But where is Tony Subai? Who said Jim is his influencer? Is his role model? But as you see, that's that's that is just exactly how the way it works. You see, you can deceive um, some people for some time, but you can you can't work for a long time. That is that's the way it's going to be. So, and the role of the media, as I, as I said earlier. Yeah. You're supposed to hold these people accountable. Thank God some, some, some people now came up later and started writing uh, the right things about it. You, you saw what was going on. You saw how people were resigning in droves. You see how people were going to courts. Instead of writing down those stories, people were going into, into writing maybe stories that we end them uh, an envelope. Yes. I think we should move away from that. We should, if we hold them accountable with our pen, they will really be accountable. That's what we owe our society. That is, I, I, that's what we were taught in the school of journalism. Mm. We owe the society the truth, not because someone is going to write or uh, uh, as, as, uh, give us an envelope, we will not tell the truth. That's exactly what we need for the society. They need to know what is going on. We're supposed to be um, uh, not emotional about it, but speak, let the facts speak for itself. Let's dig out the facts and then let the facts speak for itself. Don't glamorize somebody who there are um, many cases of stuff that shouldn't be glamorized. Why writing flowery statements about somebody who is owing his staff, who is who who you have seen that there are so many cases in court. Yeah. But if you see, because of um, the the gains of the moment, the brown envelopes of the moment, some people will still write such things. So like we we're talking about that publisher you mentioned. I, I said my story then too. Yeah. Because I was saying it and I wasn't happy. And I was saying this same man it's the same this is the same person you are, we are trying to write all this in about it's not the same person but maybe you know there are many sides to a story it would have been a case of let's hear his side of the story yes. or put us together one, one uh, but at least i even have a, a, a judgment 
to support my story. I'm not just telling them, making these stories up anymore. I now have a judgment of my So if I had, if when I said that, the publisher said, let's even hear the other side of the story and then interview them and based on those things that they it would have been helping the society to make their own judgment. But if you start to keep writing flowery statements about this uh, such a person, and organize seminar in his name, seminar in his name, it, 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 forcing all your staff to go and attend this seminar. And then, Most of your staff are running away now. So it won't all go away, really. So honestly, it's, uh, we're supposed to tell the society the, 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 the facts, let them make their judgment based on the facts that we have presented. If you see Jim O'Brien one-on-one now, sitting in front of you now, one or just you alone and him, what are you going to tell him? I'll tell him that um, he deceived me, first of all, but it wasn't for long. And i also tell him that a laborer is entitled to his hire, and whether he likes it or not, there is a God somewhere, and that is the God that he was preaching to us to. And it's the same God that which the Bible said a laborer is entitled to. So whatever, no matter how long it takes, he must pay those that he owed. And then I would also tell him, sir, I see call you say I call him Barista Jimmy Ibrahim. Let me respect him like that. But I will say, sir, if you know you cannot don't bite off more than you can chew. If you can only chew just a bite of a cob of a corn, bite uh, just a cob. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Just in the name of telling the whole people that you are a corporate octopus. If you employ ten people and was I am managing maybe just two organizations and they are successful today, it, it would have been a different story. Please, sir, do not bite off more than you can chew. That's what I'll tell him. And I'll tell him to pay whatever he owes because it is the law. I have a judgment and it's also biblical. A laborer is entitled to his hire. I want to ask you this question. So I just came my mind now. There was a time his mother was kidnapped. I don't know that year. Kidnapping has not even become so profound like this. In Nigeria, then she was kidnapped, maybe in Igbotako in the state, and she was. By the time he paid some huge amount of money, they went and dropped the mother in Ghana market, in uh, Delta State. But now, when you now had that the same mama now, burnt to death one January, I think two years ago. How did you feel that Jimmy Brian's mother got burnt inside the house during prayer? It was a sad situation. We should never glory over the death of somebody, no matter how bad that person is. That's what I think we should. It was really a sad situation. I, I, we had no issues with the mother. I think she lived a good life. She even gave gave us a son like by Sajima Ibrahim, who started out very well for young people. So I don't. I think we all felt bad. It is the loss of a life, and nobody is happy when a life is lost. Uh, even then, I also I think on you know, my Facebook, I don't know. We all sent our condolences to the bereaved because it, it was a sad situation. That was all. Okay. On the last note, what advice are you going to give to entrepreneurs that are employing young people? And the young people that are going to take the jobs from the entrepreneur, what do you think the role of a humane entrepreneur should be like in terms of remuneration, uh, development, and mentorship? Because a lot of people now you discover they say they are mentor, but you discover they are the mentor in chief. So, yeah. what do you think should be the role of the two? So, first, first of all, what is very important these days is the working environment. I think an entrepreneur should be able to when you are when it's, I think they they all start with. A very good intention to raise a company to start a company raise men and that will work for them i don't think nobody starts a company to say i just want to run it aground and and then old people and all of that but i think entre uh, entrepreneurs should be very sincere see when you are running into trouble waters you should be able to call your staff together see it will not be my on my own volition whether i want to sink or swim with you call them to get together and and say, so this is how I started out, but this is where we are right now, and this is where I wanted us to go through. And if we're able to do this, we might be able to get there. Let them decide. If they say, sir, we love your ways, we're ready to sink or swim with you, it is their decision. But don't hoodwink them. Don't deceive them. So be entrepreneurs should be sincere. And then, if the environment should also be made to be a place where you can grow, where you, where you can learn, where you where you can have a leadership, followership kind of situation. You should be able to see, show them a vision that is bigger than them, but they know that you are capable of taking them there. They should be able to see themselves where they are, they are, they are seeing somewhere that they are going to, and they are seeing their, you as their vehicle, their transportation to where they are going to. But mm. the most important thing is the sincerity of the entrepreneur. 
you, you would have started out with a very good intention, then something happens along the way. Let them know. Let them know where you are. Be humble enough to tell them that you have run into trouble with us, that you are about to, to beat the retreat or anything of such. Let them know. If they decide to stay with you, it is their decision. Don't deceive them. Don't treat them like garbage. Don't treat them like trash. Yeah. Treat them like, let the environment be. You will, and if you, if you do that, I'm telling you, I know it's not, it's not going to be all, an all rosy situation, but you will see the best of humans. I have seen it work before. You will see the best of humans. So we need a leader who should be able to, who will be sincere with us, give us a, a road map, and we will see it clearly, and then we are able to follow them. Then we have an environment that is conducive to growth, to learning, to um, uh, to joy, where you wake up in the morning and you are ready to go to. That is the kind of environment. And then, But lastly, if along the line, the entrepreneur is failing on his path, and the, and the, the workers are seeing the loopholes, and they sincerely, with all sincerity, make an attempt to write it, and it's not working. Please, don't uh, sink with a sinking boat. Get off the boat and swim to the shore if you can, because he who fights and runs away will live to fight another day. On this note, we want to thank you, uh, Mr. Lokin Hansa. It has been a very wonderful, a very insightful, and um, a very uh, creative uh, engagement with you. You have been able to open our eyes to a lot of things. I want to salute your courage. Uh, when I saw your write-up last year on the social media, I tried reaching you actually because I know you as a very man of your words, a very firm uh, philosopher, a, a man that is very, very truthful to himself first. And uh, I want to salute your courage, especially at taking uh, Jimo Ibrahim or Barista Jimo Ibrahim to court and uh, trying to tell him that he was wrong. Uh, we have a lot of bosses. It's not only Jimo Ibrahim, and we are not doing this uh, interview to denigrate or to malign or to, you know, we are just trying to enlighten a lot of people and to call uh, their knowledge to, to it that there are people who just feel happy making other people's lives miserable. And there are some people who just take their kick from talking people down and all that. And uh, we're not saying Jimmy Ibrahim is one of them, but from the relationship between staffs, old staffs, and people like Mr. Lucky Hansa with him, they can define him. And from what you've heard from this video, from what you've heard from the engagement, you can define Jimmy Ibrahim. And anywhere he finds himself too, he can reassess, redefine himself. And if he was willing to change, good for the society. Uh, so we want to thank you, sir, and we want to appreciate you that when we want to talk to you on youth development, we hope it's not going to be difficult, sir. Uh, thank you very much once again. For, as I said earlier, this is, I know Asabi Africa is a very huge platform and it's growing, growing to the extent that we are now seeing you on uh, Tunde Ednod's speech and all of that because of the groundbreaking interviews that you do. So I, like you rightly said, we're yes. not denigrating anybody. I, we're just speaking, talking to what happened. This is a story. We went to court, and this is it. So, based on that, people, you, that is your 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 right to now take a position. We are not calling Barista Jim Abraham a bad person, but if you employ somebody, pay him. That's all. I, I know, like we said earlier, he started out with good intention, maybe, but it didn't go. It didn't end well, and this is where we are. That's why we're having this conversation in the first place. So, I I hope that we, uh, with these young people out there and those who are seeking employment opportunities, we know that there is a thing called beat a retreat. There is a thing called walk away and there is a thing called go to court when you, your rights are trampled upon. I hope we all learn from this as we keep learning. Thank you so much. And uh, we want you to share it and share the truth till the next time that we're going to be lucky to be with Mr. Lucky Hansa. We want to thank you for watching and uh, uh, we want to say this is a fantastic, insightful interview. We want to tell you that for the truth to be established, please keep sharing until the next time we find ourselves in the ambience of Mr. Loki Hansa. We want to thank you once again and say goodbye. <music>